Dr. Drew, phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. And uh, last night's guest, Ron Jeremy. Tonight, Bill Nye, the science guy. Logical. Running the gamut. Sure we are. And uh, Bill, uh, of course, you know from Bill Nye, the science guy. I don't even know what's that. Was that always on PBS? It was on PBS for a long time. It started out in syndication for you broadcast historians. I uh, I must say I really enjoyed that show, and uh, was uh, I know it was geared toward uh, nine year olds, but uh, it was just right for it Adam. Was perfect. It was half, right. Half in my the wheel viewers house. were grown ups, and and nominally that would include you. Interestingly, the the uh, LA Unified School Districts uh, failed Adam so miserably. Everything he learned, everything right, would mm-hmm. be from talk radio, and public television. Right, and internet porn. And internet porn. And of course, yeah, yeah. internet porn. Yeah, I, I, uh, I am, I'm so pathetic. Once in a while, I'll flip on Jeopardy, and they'll ask some question, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'll get the answer. And then they'll ask another one, I'll get that answer, and I'll go, well, buddy, you're really on a roll here. And then they cut to the panel, it's nine-year-olds, <laughs> and it, it's, it's, it's essentially third-grade Jeopardy. And this is the same thing would happen with Bill Nye. Like, I'd be seeing that. I'd go, huh, this is for kids. And then I'd go, oh, I didn't know. Oh, what, what are those things called? Molecules? You're molecules? making my day. I, I really, I, I, if anyone learned this, and I know no one I know learned any of this crap, they certainly have forgotten it by the time they uh, hit 30. So uh, going back and watching your show, it, it, was, it was riveting. Oh, I, good, I, I, good. I would watch it all the way through and was uh, very interested in it. Good. And uh, you look exactly the same. Go figure. Well, let me tell you this. Don't take, don't take this in a bad way, but nerdy guys don't age. They're sort of 37. They're 37 when they're in high school. They're 37 when they're 67. They're <laughs> Eat just your heart 37. Up, Eat your heart It's up. bad. It, it's not good for a while, but then it gets well, good. Then you got it going on. Sure yeah, you because, sure you I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Bill's uh, resume here or uh, list of accomplishments, and it's stuff yeah, he, he, in 1977 he's working on projects, and... You know, I mean, if you look at Bill, I was go, alive in '77. I know, sure. but you were you, you should have been, been been 11 or something. Well, I should have been. Well, how old are you? I'm uh, 47. See, that's that's what I mean. Look at him, brand yeah. new, brand new. Yeah. He will brand regale new. you though about the benefits of the pocket protector any moment now. Oh, really? I, I think they're great. I, I don't, I don't see him sporting one. Well, well, I don't. You they, don't need it all the time. They, they need do. to be brought back. The pocket well, protector. sure they do. Sure they do. Yeah, our, it's a great thing. You, know, you can't beat. You want to store information? Sure, you got your zip drives. You got your CD you know, rewritables, but you cannot beat a piece of paper and a pen. You got multiple color pens. There you go. You're multi, uh, multimodal. I like the pen that uh, gave you the four choices with the colors. <laughs> like you needed that. Like, uh, well, I, I really need to do this document. This one needs to be drafted in green. Green. Yeah, no. that's an important one. Well, letters. Letters were in green. They were? Yeah. Composition for school being in uh, blue. For English class, it was in black. No and idea. sure, and then uh, and then you got to have a pencil. <laughs> oh yeah, Drew, you didn't pencil. you didn't play this game, did you? With the different colors in in high school? No. But Drew's Drew's a, he's a scholar himself, so you guys. Oh yeah. You oh, guys yeah. pick each other's brains during the commercial. But also, what I'm going to talk to you about during the commercial, Bill, is uh, all this aviation stuff. Oh, sure. Adam's into that. Working on at, at Boeing. Yeah. Working on uh, yeah. flaps and stabilizers. Flaps, they were on horizontal stabilizers. There's a tube. On 747 uh, horizontal stabilizer, hydraulic tube, mm-hmm. I kind of think of, yeah, as is, my is tube. Is the Bill Nye tube? I kind of think of it as my tube. It, it was all the buzz in first class last <laughs> time I threw the, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow was talking about on her way to uh, JFK, I believe. She wanted to know if the... the Bill uh, Nye tube? The, well, she just called the Nye tube. <laughs> the Nye tube, it suppresses a little vibration that they, you'd have in horizontal stabilizer. It's a quinky tube, second or differential equation. Not that hard. Well, but what did I do? I convinced him it was worth doing. If I got nothing else, if I bring nothing else to the party, it's enthusiasm. Even then. Bill's, uh, Bill's uh, sh- new show is called The, uh, the Eyes of Nye, although shouldn't it be called The Eye of Nye? Well, I use both eyes. Right. So we, we went plural. Yeah. Gives you a 3D view, a stereoscopic yeah. perspective. I, it, may, it, may be, it may be grammatically correct or, or even, uh, e- even correct 
physiologically, but uh, the eye of nine, I think, flows a little better. So we'll eye of nine. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll change it on your recommendation. We'll work sure. on that. Sure. Thank you. And then you could name it af- the change after me. Well, sure we would. There'd be a little asterisk. <laughs> be the cruel of bar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have no, as, as recommended by Adam. Mm, mm. Like that. Yeah. So we're uh, in this uh, I have nine. This is on a PBS as well. Well, that's the hope, but the deal hasn't been made. The deal. Can we talk about the deal? We're nature. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. in Culver City. But I know. I'm. I'm glad it hasn't enough. been made because I haven't seen it. Yeah. Well, it was started in September. It, it'll. It'll go on the air. Yeah. In you know, beginning of television season. Right. And and yeah. Listen, I've seen PBS. Yeah, I'm with you. What's it take I, to get on the air over there? The British Hill, Hill Hauser's on the air on, British on PBS. Accent. Oh, sewing is good. Boy. Your competition is Hill Hauser touring a churro factory <laughs> in Van Nuys. Dude, dude, no argument. You're in. Now, this <laughs> You're in. is wonderful. All you got to do is not fall over. Like that's what you'd think. That's what you'd think. We'll see. We'll, well look, see. What, what, your, with your track record, he's won Emmys, Drew. You I'm understand sure of that. this? Sure, yeah. yeah. He's 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 an Emmy Award winner from PBS. That's a they good party. Be I recommend for you that. to get back. Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should. And what about? You know, he, uh, I was telling him yeah. the, at the you've ever been to Disney World, even the dinosaur ride there. No. He and Ellen DeGeneres do this this very long sort of movie before you get on the ride. And really? My, my kids thought that was the greatest thing ever. That was That's good. Really. That was done in Circle Vision, yeah, in Circle Vision, which they claim was Walt Disney himself's vision. Really? So between each of the lenses are mirrors. Mm-hmm. And then you measure, the, these guys go out and measure the set very, very accurately so that the mullions, as we say, the vertical lines between the individual screens. I know what mullions oh, are. Of course you I've do, yeah. hung French doors. Of course you friend. have. Yeah, of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hung them. And so uh, ooh, ooh. they and line the car, up. That's a wise guy. Don't start carpenter. going carpentry with me. Uh, so uh, anyway, they line up, and uh, the effect is quite... Charming, right? Mm-hmm. You were you were charmed, absolutely. And they claim it was Walt Disney himself's idea to do this many years ago. And so you got five cameras going at once, six cameras going at once, and they're so loud. You're in there, you can't even hear the other actor. You're standing this close to him because the cameras are so loud. Yeah, it's funny. You have to oh, lip really? sync. You have to you have to watch the other person's lips. Wow, an let, odd feeling. Let me uh, I worked. Let me yell at Drew for one second. Drew, what do you think the chances are of been into the dinosaur ride? I don't know. It might have been. Really? You you not been? It's sort of a big, big event. It's called it's the World big, of Energy. It's a big thing there. At the nah, Disney, I've never been to Disney. World. Ellen's know, Energy yeah. Adventure. If you'd, if you'd been to Epcot, you would have I'd gone to this thing. Yeah. All right. Experimental All right. planned community of tomorrow. Well, what, what about what about uh, regular commercial TV? Uh, ever, uh, yeah, well, right? sure. I was on Comedy Central doing the old Almost Live thing there for uh, many right. years. But they... Uh, a, a, oh, you know, the show what, what started out in commercial television. Is that what you're saying? It started in syndication. Yeah, it was on once oh. a week for a couple of years before we had 65 shows. Then it went into it got stripped, uh, as we say in the biz, five nights a week, stripped. Mm-hmm. And, and when do you uh, any uh, any thoughts of uh, anyone approach you do uh, you know daytime TV? Well, uh, not really, kinda. You know, I've been on most talk shows that are out of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the name of talk shows out of business. Chevy Chase there. Magic oh, done, Johnson done, there. Done Suzanne Chevy Summers Chase. there. Okay. Suzanne Summers. Did we ever do that, Drew? No, I didn't. One day, uh, you know, talk to dance with her. I dance with Suzanne. <laughs> let's put a. I have an autographed thigh no master. No big deal. Mm. You're you're a genius. You don't no, need, no. You don't <laughs> that's need just that something horse, that came to me, uh, if I may. Crap. Listen, we should put together a list of uh, shows that we've been on that are uh, canceled. And we can Ours? include our own. Yeah. Yeah, our own. Oh, we, we've got We may beat Bill. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, well, no, it's uh, not, uh, hey, it's not something I want to win, but I guess I'll take you on. You done Keenan? Uh, that no. could be one for us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Home team? One. Home team, Terry Bradshaw. Home team, yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> Lisa. Lisa, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell, what? Yes. Yeah, we did yeah. Rosie. Oh, no, we, we did, did, uh, we did uh, Roseanne. Roseanne. Roseanne, I never did. Rosie, yes. Producer Ann, the world's House greatest party. producer. She's saying in my ears, the back. one show we haven't done, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Rosie O'Donnell. I'm like, huh? <laughs> no, I was, that was uh, Rosie was charming. It was fun. Uh, Drew, we're gonna we're gonna we may have to dig deep into our bag. Well, you know, be careful shows. what you wish for. How about Vibe? No. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> the blacks don't like Bill Nye. <laughs> hey, you know what was cool? Uh, I was on the Magic Johnson show with mm-hmm. Lionel Richie and Chris Rock before uh, he was a all, giant. All dude. black guys. And then me. It was funny. We had it was that fun. is funny. It was cool. All right, all right. Derek. So we're about Bill's even. Bill's got a little Dr. Bruce shows. in him, doesn't he? Well, yeah. yeah. All nerds have a little Dr. Bruce <laughs> in them. But, again, that's not a bad thing. No, no, no. Yeah, of course it isn't. Drew. 
Drew, uh, I, it's always the over you under. Your coffee again. See no. how long it takes a coffee mug to you make contact with the microphone. I've got, the I got the brain function. It's like yeah, everything, yeah. everything has to stop when there's this sound. Yeah, okay. Huh. That's a all kinds of kind. geniuses, huh? Takes all kinds. You already said? I'm trying to bring that back. The all kinds thing? It takes all kinds. You're three sigma. Uh, you could do that. Yeah. You could help me bring Can back I say three sigma, back. Dr. Drew? No, what does that mean? You know, standard it. deviation. Oh, three sigma. Yes, he is. Oh, he is. He's, he's a big four, boy. Five sigma. Yeah. Oh, he is. Yeah. yeah, he's way outside the box. If you guys, if out there in the uh, non-scientific, non-engineering community, if you knew how funny it was to three say sigma. Adam is three sigma, <laughs> 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 that is comedy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Not a married guy, huh? No. How are the ladies treating you? Oh, that's good. It's good? We're good. All right, yeah. buddy. Derek? Yeah. You're uh, 16? Yeah. What's up? I'm Bill Nye, the science guy's biggest fan in the world. Oh, Derek, I greetings. I this man when I was nine years old. Right on, man. <coughs> He's the reason I want to become a scientist, even though I, I can't pass science class. I still want to become a scientist. You might be able to if you applied yourself, Derek. Yeah, but it's hard because you got to learn molecules. and. Well, you we're all made of molecules. It's no mystery. <laughs> I'm so what? That doesn't mean you know molecules. He's just making him uh, feel good. I know, but stop trying to make our listeners feel good. You need to beat up on All him. right, Derek, you suck for not being good at science. That's but, but right. But what's your question? Go, Bill. He just wants to know how to, get, how to be you. Right? Derek? Yeah. Oh, Bill, he's uh, You want to know how to be me? I want to be. I want to know how to become Bill and I, the science guy. Well, uh, speaking for myself personally, myself... I combined uh, a love of science, which I got pretty much before I can remember, with um, a desire to be funny. And I know what you're saying, but looks aren't everything. So uh, <laughs> I uh, you think work you hurt hard. Your own case there. Yeah, you work hard at uh, science, and you work hard at writing jokes. I'm not kidding. So try. It's really interesting to try to write a joke. Well, I, oh, uh, you got Adams here on this. Yeah, it takes you want to go. You want people to go six genius. seconds and remember that a joke uh, not only has a punch line, it has what's called a punch word. Punch word. Uh -huh. And so it's if you if you're interested in it, uh, give it a shot because there's nothing cooler than becoming. Ask Drew. There's nothing cooler than becoming a scientist because every day there's something new. Every day there's something cool. Yeah. So well, go for it, man. Hey, Derek, give me the ball. Yeah. Take over. You got a good joke or a uh, a theorem? Um, um, no, no. All right, buddy. You smoking a lot of weed? That'll work against yeah, you, Derek. Like, that'll yeah, work yeah, against that'll you. That'll be bad, bad for you. All right. Hey, all right. I tell you what, it messes up your short-term memory at least. This is anecdotally. Now, Drew, you know more about it than no, I No, that, that's not anecdotally. That that has been shown categorically to be the, the case. What's anecdotal or not thoroughly proven is whether or not it alters frontal lobe function and, and alters... Derek, the it alters frontal lobe function. Let me say this on uh, behalf of all the Heshers, though. It does bring out the scientist and everyone when you're trying to form a pipe. <laughs> Out That's, of the That's, That's the engineer. That's the engineer. Sort of MacGyver meets yeah. scientist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have nothing but a uh, spent toilet paper roll, uh, some God, foil guys, from, uh, so from some lame. gum. Uh, you, yeah, maybe an apple, and you got to get a hit of weed. Jeez. You know what I'm saying, Bill? I don't quite. I watch oh, these man. guys. My I watch friends, these guys I used to be. Uh, my friends have. Uh, I've. I've uh, living with, and man, it's bad for you. It's got to be bad for you. Whoa. We lived with a bunch of hashers. Really? In college? Well, yeah, in college. Of yeah. course. Yeah. The dog's name was Ganja. Yeah. Really? Excuse they me. They played reggae all day. Yeah. Oh. Reggae music. Oh. Where'd you go? Where'd you go to college? Cornell. And uh, and heard that one. And it, you you were. <laughs> You were in a, you weren't in a fraternity. No, no, but you know, you live in a house with a sure. bunch of people. Yeah. Oh man. It's got to be bad for you. Oh, here comes Narc Bill and his bow oh, no, tie. No, hey, Hide man. the weed, everybody. No, no, no. They let He's him go. He's gonna bum your high. But I did all not like. I also not crazy for the smell. Not huh? crazy for it. All right, but what about you? Like shotgun a beer every once in a while? No comment. <laughs> you like a little drinking? Turns out booze not too bad. Boy, I really, uh, I really hit my, uh, I really hit my booze. I really, you know those, uh, how do you know when you're an alcoholic things? Yeah, the, the tests. Yeah, the, yeah tests. the ones you always get 10 out of 10 on. Yeah, <laughs> I got home and then eventually get angry and attack the magazine viciously. <laughs> Chew it up. Page, <laughs> throwing it around. If I just throw this out, I'll be fine. I'll I, have uh, no symptoms. I, uh, here's what I did last night. I got home, I drank a little red wine before I go to bed at Bo night. Tra I'll translate. Bottle of red wine. Bottle. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I drink that too. Two, two, three glasses, you know? <laughs> two or three. Two or three. Bomb. I like to, uh, I, that's how I unwind. Highball glasses. Highballs. <laughs> and tumblers. And 
I, I, I do that every night. Okay, I, the aluminum milkshake cup. The I drink thing that goes and, on and, and every morning. I, I, I drink one of those cartons of white wine. <laughs> <laughs> Six nice. liter cartons. So I come home last night and there ain't nothing there. Ooh. So, so I you think, attack the magazine. So I think I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get myself. A, you know, I got a little buzz going here. So I go, uh, I make myself a highball. I'll get a little, I'll make a little vodka drink. The same and, vodka you were swigged out of to go to sleep the other night. Uh, Gee whiz! Could be another bottle. Could be a new. You bottle. finish that one. Could and be. all this doesn't hurt you. Well, what, what, you got that. Oh, part, okay, yeah. okay. Well, I'm a heavyweight, Bill. Yeah, heavyweight. So, I uh, make a little vodka drink, but there's really just a splash of vodka on <laughs> the bottom of the the thing. There's no it's vodka left. Eight ounces. <laughs> yeah, I make a little <laughs> vodka drink, and I drink that down, and now it's like eh, it's it's getting near one o'clock. I got another hour of uh, you know Iraq coverage to watch. So I said, <laughs> I need a drink, and I look around. I got nothing but. Uh, Sambuca. Sambuca. Licorice. Is, is like this liqueur, like yeah. this licorice liqueur that has the... Uh, and this is thing. This consistency of like a liquid Syrup, mercury, yeah. really. Uh, 11 and, more ounces. And, and, <laughs> so here I am drinking a tumbler yeah, yeah, of uh, yeah. licorice uh, Sambuca. I mean, it was, Three it was tumblers. really a point where I should have just <laughs> shot some NyQuil down and then hit myself on the head with a shoe. NyQuil follow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sambuca. A NyQuil follow. That's like a chaser. Oh, oh yeah. Sure. Sambuca last night, everybody. Desperation. Right. So, Drew, Drew, yeah. seriously, what is frontal lobe function? Help me. Frontal lobe, in particular, the right frontal lobe is the part of the brain that negotiates emotional regulation and emotional integration. So, when you're growing through adolescence, that's the part of the brain that's really growing. You're negotiating social skills and how to develop a sense of self. Mm -hmm. And so, so is really, your brain growing, adding cells? A, absolutely, it's yeah. actually growing. And the, they've shown a rest of that growth in even moderate pot smokers around the age of 15. Not been, it's not theoretic yet. It's not proven, but the data is starting to come. Boy, in. it sure seems like yeah, it. Yeah. Now the question is, when they stay, if they were to stop smoking at 17, would they catch up and be normal? That hasn't been studied yet. But uh, you know, it, uh, more more than the physiological stuff, it just kind of yanks you off the field. It's like somebody parking you in the garage for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. You know, you just you're you're not in the game. I mean, I mean, what part of life, especially if you liken it to a sport, I mean, can you just take three years off and go right back out and be on your game? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's golf or football or studying or work or whatever it is. You get sort of, you get yanked off the, the court and sit, sat on the bench for a few years. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get back into the game sometimes. Good point. Uh, thank you. And what was the second word you, call, you said? But Sambuca. <laughs> That's different. That's rocket fuel, my friend. Integration? What's integrating? Integrating like... Uh, being able to pull top-down information from the social world and bottom-up information from the somatic experiences and somatic having to do with your body, body able to yeah. integrate and regulate those All experiences. Right. All right, Bill, stop learning, please. <laughs> Parker, it's yeah. obnoxious when you learn. Parker, you're 15. <laughs> hey guys, What's didn't up? say it was gonna be easy tonight, Bill. No, no, no. Hey, it's just it's he's just funny though. See, yeah, oh, he's take he's notes. Cracks me up. The guy cracks me up. All right, I'm here, Parker. I love you, Adam. Good times. What's all right. Um, my question is, well, actually, I have a question for Dr. Drew and something I'm curious about. Um, my boyfriend wants to have anal sex, and I want to know, like, the dangers and preps and spice, everything like that. So. And you're 15. <gasps> Accurate? No. How old are you? I'm 15. 15. Yeah. Well, there's, 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 there's a study she, we got to do with Bill Press. Calling, oh, yeah. She thought you were yeah. calling her accurate, like it was her name. Yeah. <laughs> You're 15? Accurate? Yeah. Like, like Shelly? No. Yeah. Not Shelly. Okay. Bar, uh, how old is he? He's 16. 16. Are, are, you guys, are you guys bored with sex? Um, no. How old's the guy? He's got to be 21. No, he's 16. No, he's 16. He just has a total ass fetish. That's nice. I'm All right. So, so, so uh, risks uh, sexually transmitted diseases, obviously. So you should really plan on using a condom. And you should more than plan. Yes, you should categorically <laughs> use it. But our, our callers, they get defensive if you tell them what to do. Uh, and uh, you can tear that area. You can cause uh, fistulas and hemorrhoids and things like that. Things happen. Yes, you have to be very careful. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not something you want to do. Doesn't sound like you're into. into it. Yeah. I don't. I have no idea. Well. Okay. Yeah, but uh, listen, you know, once in a while someone talks about food, like when everyone talks about eating brains, I've never eaten brains. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I know, I, I know I'm not into it. I just, I just know I, I, I can taste it. I don't, I don't want it. How about haggis? I'm not, well, I don't want haggis. I, I, haggis tastes like Taco Bell. That tripe, haggis, all that stuff. I, I just, I, I know I'm not into it before I do it. Don't you get that feeling about your ass, Parker? Well, I <laughs> Isn't mean, your ass sort of haggis? Before. 
What? He fingered me before, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't mind it. I mean, All I right. liked it. I don't know. He, All right. He put his finger down. How's the relationship yeah. going with him? Okay. Okay. Wait, is the relationship going all right? Yeah. And I've been why? Out for like seven months. And so. were you you been sort of sort of chaotic life growing up, that kind of thing? Um. Yeah, I guess I don't. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you need high levels of stimulation or to feel sort of aroused and sexual. You um. Need, yeah. Hey. Were you physically abused growing up? I I don't know. It depends on your definition. Somebody uh, hit you. It's, Some, it's, yeah. That's yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you sort of need this high level of arousal and stimulation in order to even feel. Good, okay. feel sexual, and that's yeah, not exactly. I'm a cutter. You're so, a cutter. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is more of that kind of um, self, potentially part of the, the harming the self impulse. All right. Okay. So be careful. I mean, look, listen. You you've got a lot of stuff to work. on. Are you in treatment? Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, talk to your therapist about these choices. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And so I have something I'm curious about too. Mm. Yes. Okay. Um. So. The first time I had an orgasm, I was about nine. Mm-mm. Were you sexually abused? I don't know. Do you I think? Not, nothing I remember. Was there a lot of just, I mean, was it really chaotic in your household? Do you have drug addict parents? No. All right, go ahead. Um, and so I used to masturbate like a lot because I was homeschooled for a while. Mm. And I used to masturbate like 11 times a day. Mm. And the, I still that, masturbate a lot, so I don't know. Does that mean I'm like sexually addicted and I'm mm, bipolar? Yeah, it's, you, it so. could just be your bipolarity. It, it, the, the, people when they're manic, hypomanic, they'll get like that. Did, wait, did she ask if she was bipolar? She said, "I am bipolar." Yeah. Not, oh, I thought you were asking if she, she were. If she has to ask, I'll, I, 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 let me have offer. You, have she you, is bipolar. Have you been diagnosed? Yes, I have. Oh, I have all right. Medication and everything. Okay, so. so that's probably what that is. Yeah, although. Okay. The, to pick up that heavy a pace at nine usually is sexual abuse. Uh, I was at 11 when I was nine. 11 times a day? Yeah. Then moved up to, well, I added one a year. Well, until now, I'm 38. There you go. Let's see, let's see. Do you know four nine times a day? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, my rule, if, if I have a daughter, is uh, no ass play until 15 and a half, <laughs> young lady. That's my thing. You're going to start uh, indoctrinating her when she's three? Of Honey, yeah. When you're yeah. 15? Yeah. No ass play. No, no, 15 and a half. 15 and a half. 15 and a half. That's right. When you get your learner's permit, then, then we'll talk. Then we can talk. Then we can talk. All right. Bill Nye, the science guy here, everybody. Thank you. Uh, we will uh, take ourselves a little break when we come back. <laughs> to, uh, uh-oh. Bill's going to get a boner. Please, Anderson, no more. Uh, we'll speak to uh, Jennifer, who's uh, 19, has got a question for uh, Bill. Wants to know, uh, oh, wants to know about uh, Beatman's World. Is that Beatman's World? Beatman. Beatman's World. Yeah. That's all I do is get erroneous information fed to me in this guy. Yell during the break. Here we go. All right, we'll be back. Hey everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Drew's going to be in the room in one second. He's uh, on the uh, phone I'm giving a little uh, consultation to a friend of mine who needs, uh, needs his advice. So he's doing the Lord's work over there. Bill Nye is uh, here tonight, the uh, science guy. And uh, Bill, you don't mind the science guy. Cookie for it. Cookie for it. Yeah, really? It rhymes, you know. Yeah. Where do you live? Uh, well, I live in Santa Monica and Seattle. Mm-hmm. You like Seattle? Oh yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. So, did you go to? Uh, let's let's trace uh, Bill Nye's. Oh, we got nothing but time. Right, Bill. Bill's in uh, Cornell, not smoking pot. No. And Bill graduates with an engineering degree. Engineering, yeah. And then Bill goes to Seattle to work for Boeing. For Boeing, yes, sir. And uh, <laughs> Bill, and the cameraman knocks the door over. Well, not all the way over. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. You go to you go to Boeing in the uh, mid seventies, later seventies. It's called later seventies. Later seventies, and uh, you go to work. What's your first assignment? Uh, nose wheel steering on seven forty seven. Uh, you got to have a priority valve. Was the priority valve sticking, mm-hmm. or was had a wine bottle rolled under the rudder pedal uh-huh. on Air France? Uh huh. <laughs> <So they, laughs> Went right off the end of the runway. Didn't steer. Oh my and, God. and now, now the seven forty seven. His his. Been around it's big, for, for big plane, but in 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 seventy seven the seven forty seven has been around for ten years. About right? ten years, yeah. And and now you're there on a project that's been built, but you're trying to improve it. Yeah, an- analysis we called it back in the day. Analysis. 
So you're uh, you're down, and, and you don't have a whole bunch of computers at this <laughs> point, do you? We had a computer that could take up to 40 lines of basic. And Fortran. Well, well, Fortran 7 was around, but that was being supplanted by uh, PLC, and Boeing had its own software. But the thing was, uh, you'd use the way to get hydraulic problems done in those days was in basic and on a drawing board, a layout, so called. What's in basic mean? Uh, basic is a program. That's sequential. It doesn't uh, compile. Doesn't link. Just and, goes from line to line. And what would you say? And I don't know if you if you have an answer to this, but the uh, seven computer. <laughs> you're right. The computer you're screwing around with. I mean, uh, today's laptops. Oh, my watch has got a hundred times the capability. And the storage medium was cassette tape, audio cassette tape. Oh, which really? Was cool, man. You could put it in the company mail and like send it to another guy. As opposed to being reel to reel. That's right. Yeah, sure. Wow. Yeah. I, I entered engineering school with a slide rule. Wow. I, oh, yeah. I was graduated with a calculator. I was right. still pretty quick on a slide rule. Still pretty quick. And uh, I, I use a, a slide rule to scratch myself. Really. That's the thing. <laughs> well, they're good I've for that, too. Never but you, you, should, you should align them after you use them. True. Yeah, Did like, you ever own a slide rule? Briefly. <laughs> what happened? I have a small collection. Went to the computer. Yeah. All right. Collection. So uh, you, you're at Boeing, and uh, you're uh, you're working as a, a mechanical engineer there. Yeah. And you're, you're there for how long? Three years. For three years. And then I what? mean, I went home at night. They let you go home yeah, at night. Yeah, yeah, they encouraged it, actually. And uh, you're there for three years, and then what? Now it's uh, 1980. Went to work at a shipyard. Oh, really? Working on, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do something groovy, something politically important. Right. So I worked on oil slick skimming and ah. the seeming tri seemingly trivial task of separating oil and water. Ah. In the oil field, which isn't that easy. The water's dirty and oil sticks to it and hmm. so on. But in the meantime, of course, like so many engineers, I was doing stand-up comedy at night. Cause yeah, well, there is. I mean, you, you bring this up, but it's like like there's certain professions, like ironically, rabbi. Those guys <laughs> always have schmaltzy, horrible senses of humor. Those guys are hacks. I don't know what it is. But they should but have good senses of humor. Engineers. Should. It, it should be better, yeah. But engineers do like, they do have their own kind of humor. I mean, they're smart guys, but there's Some. other smart guys that don't uh, lean toward humor. I don't, I don't, have, you, have you figured out what well, it is it about the guy engineers? Used, the guys I used to work with I thought were very funny. Guys right. I thought were, uh, they were in on the joke. You got to be. You got to have a sense of humor about things or you'd, or what? You'd explode. Yeah, but engineers seem to have it more than other right on, seri dude. serious professions. That's right on. Do you know you know what I'm talking about, Drew? Except for my stepdad is an engineer. I get, get, get to jump I on the guy they, to get a word out of They go either way. They go either way kind of thing. Yeah, okay, I don't want to jump. Yeah, maybe you're right. Right. All right. So now you're working on your comedy. Sure I was. And you're also working on... Uh, uh, Taking the oil off of uh, water after, yeah. uh, after left there, I went. To, I left that. I didn't. That job was not um, was not precise enough. Right. These guys who just weld things together by eye didn't appeal. I wanted to get back into the math. Wanted to do the numbers. So, so I went to another company, Sunstrand, working on business jet navigation. Now what? Now you mean uh, business jet like Learjets kind of thing? Yeah, Learjets. And and the navigation systems that are in them. Yes, back before we had global positioning. Yeah. Yes, it was inertial. And we liked it. And now, uh, how, how do you do navigation on You it? have uh, gyroscopes that are so accurate, you point them one way and you trust them, and you huh. just fly that way. Wow. wow. These gyroscopes did not have spinning wheels. Oh, they didn't? No, they had spinning beams of light. They're laser gyros. Oh, Dr. Yeah. Drew's looking at me with incredulity. Wow. Wow. interesting. So it's quite a charming thing. You have a block of glass that is uh, thermally happy. It doesn't expand or contract very much. And then you have a beam of light going through it from mirror to mirror, and... Uh, you may not have thought about this, but the beams of light stay in one plane, one uh, orientation in so-called inertial space. Then as you turn the airplane, mm -hmm. you're rotating around these beams of light. Right. And uh, what happens in a, in a circle of light, there's called ring laser gyros. What happens in the circle or a polygon, corner to corner to corner, you end up with two counter-rotating beams. They go against each other. That's the only stable configuration. Any beam that's not going along that axis goes off into space and gets absorbed and it glows pink. It's quite cool looking. It's a very science fiction looking thing. It's hard to believe it even works. And then you fly the plane around in any orientation. There's all this kooky math you got to do to convert the orientation of the inertial beams back to the orientation of the plane. But it can be done. And in those days, in those days, 
The computers yeah. were not quite fast enough to do it fast as the plane was going. Wow. And it was a hassle. It was really weird. If you look back, you know, that kind of computation could be done. I, I'm just by the by the you know the, yeah, that guy. What was his name? Derek. Derek could have done with, it. On could pot, it. he could do it. Yeah. I'm brought back to uh, 1976 with Bill laying the same uh, uh, spiel out. Buddies in front of the TV set. And his stone <laughs> roommates are like, Bill McMillan and wife are on, dude. <laughs> Why don't you take Make your gy- on right. Take your Whoa! Gy- take your gyros. The lost on the younger viewer. Take your gyros and head them toward the kitchen. Yeah. Oh yeah. Get your ass out in front of the TV set. All right. So so, so now all right, we'll get into more of this sure as, we as we go along. But I'm sure I'm very interested in this That's stuff. That's charming. And you know, there's a lot of people let me just say this. Please. You uh, idiots out there, you should all have an interest in things you don't know. Mm. You really should. Like there's people who are Democrats, and they only want to listen to sort of people with a left wing mm-hmm. bend. And there's other people, the Republicans, they only want to listen to Rush Limbaugh, or they're not. They're they're just, you know, Bill's talking about a, a, a engineering, mechanical engineering. I'm not in. I'm not a mechanical engineer, so therefore I shouldn't be interested. No, you should be more interested. Mm. The stuff you know about, you should be less interested about be, because you already know it. Thank well, you, and plus, you everybody has more of an interest in it than you realize. You, everybody drives cars. So it's all mechanical engineering. Yeah, it's not an interest. Jennifer. Oh, yo, what's this up? Is, this is your same logic of people know molecules because we're all made of molecules. <laughs> well, so you should have an interest. I was trying to support uh-huh. Cars your point are made of molecules, it. too, right? Yes, heck yeah. You're Jennifer. Right, all right, so we should all know. Uh-huh. Jennifer, you're 19. Yeah. Um, hey, Adam. Hey, Drew. Bill. I'm, like, so in love with you. I'm, like, a hardcore fan. And before I even asked my question, I was wondering if there's any way I could get your autograph. Uh, yeah. Uh, go to my website, BillNye.com. Explain who you are, uh-huh. and I will do my best to send you my autograph. Okay. You'll see there's a message to Bill thing. I do them usually on Mondays, but we don't get to them every, you know, so let's say once a month. We'll get to it. Okay, thank you, thank you. Oh, no, Jennifer is I who must thank you. Now, your question. Okay. My question is, since I think you're so gangster, seriously, you're OG, <laughs> since you're the first... He is OG, isn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, I am yeah, OG. That's the first thing I oh, thought when I met him. second G. That's old you're geek, the by the way. <laughs> well, my question was, like, since you were the first scientist on TV that I seen, and then all of a sudden other scientists started popping out, like Beekman's world. I was wondering if you ever... All right, hold on. It's Beekman. It's Beekman, like the beak of the little penguins there. Yeah, he would have this like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes, yeah. no, hold on, you're wrong. Stop, yeah, stop Beekman being. Beekman actually was you're on screwing first. everybody up. Beekman was, Beekman's world. Beekman was before Bill Nye. Yeah, by a few months. Oh, hmm. Bill ripped and off they, Beekman. Well, let's well, see. When I, Bill just did it better. Well, they approached me about writing for that show, and I talked to the guy on the phone. And it became clear to both of us that I really didn't want to write for his show. I wanted to kind of have my own show. Mm. And the thing that set, well, we can talk about Beekman's role all the time, but they, we are uh, like-minded individuals. I would see him at these uh, events, and uh, we share the vision. Lead on, Jennifer. Okay, that was just gonna my question right there. Have you ever had, like, any friction with him or anything? No, no, no. We're competing, you know, against no, no. each other. One time on the radio, though, the, somebody called and asked the perfect question. We were on, there's some, there's a, you've heard of it. It's another uh, radio sort of network uh, Na- public national public radio. That's oh, what they yeah. call it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I and heard that uh, yeah. And so I was on there with um, the guy who plays Beekman on the show. Played Beekman on the show. And uh, somebody called and asked the perfect question: Why is science education so important? And he said, "Can I take that question?" Like he took, he stole my thunder. Yeah. But that's just uh, that's just playing good ball. I have no. Uh, that was is, a good is, move is on his part. Is he as good a scientist as you are? Oh, he's an actor, and he's okay. But oh, he's, he's not. Okay. He's not. I, okay. I think Bad that boy. with all due respect. <laughs> no, no, no. With all due respect. When you he would read from prompter, teleprompter, and you can tell. And I would right. write all the stuff you that I say, and you could tell. No, right. no, no. Just, oh, I see. Learn it and do it. I'm just yanking. After it you too. write it, you write it, learn it, and do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So lead oh. on, Jennifer. That's your question. She's done. All right. Best Beat. to Jennifer. Keep up the good work. Oh, forget see her. See you down the road. Beatman, please. Jameson. Yes. <clears throat> You're 16. Yes. What's up? Uh, lately I've been having these dreams of. Uh, like me smoking pot, and I've been clean for three months now. Well, using dreams are absolutely routine. Anyone who's been addicted to a drug and stops will have using dreams. It's your brain really craving the drug. It's that's the feeling you have. You want to be using. You want it so badly. And with certain drugs, they're so powerfully reinforcing. You will wake up with all the physiologic effects of having used cocaine, being the best example. Of that all you right. wake up, heart rate up, 
things. The, the, the sort of skin tone up, sweaty, lips numb if you drink, you, you, your nose numb. Really? Yeah. And what causes that? Your brain is uh, reacting with it? It just wants the drug. It's just thinking about it, preoccupying about it, just the way somebody might have a sexual dream, any other kind of drive that Can't they would. Imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, some people have those. Adam, as you know, 49 times a day never has an opportunity for that kind of yeah, thing. No, he doesn't have time. No. Um, How dare both of you. So anyway, lead on. So apparently, oh. dude, it's not that uncommon. But, but I'll tell you what. It doesn't, sound, it doesn't sound like you're in a program because if you were, people would tell you that everyone has that. Well, I was in the program, and uh, I didn't really bring it up. It, was, I, it just started recently. About All right, well, program. tell your sponsor about it then. Um. I don't have a sponsor. All right, like I, I said, you're not in the program. No, it was a. It was called cannabis youth treatment. It was a probation program. All right. Well, uh, then, then I'm sure they talked to you about 12 step recovery and about the importance of getting involved with that, right? Um. Yeah. I yeah. I guess it was a 12 step kind All of. All right. Thing. So go ahead and go to MA and get a sponsor. Without working with a sponsor, you aren't going to get better, and these feelings are going to eventually overwhelm you. They, they really don't, don't settle down. They get worse with time. True. Nobody uh, wants to use a sponsor. Hey, you're always preaching about the sponsor. Yeah, the, the, because that's where the work has to get done, and people avoid it. They don't want to deal with it. All right. Bill Nye, the Takes science a year, guy. though, right? Takes a good year. A, at yeah. least a year. All right. Bill is, good uh, luck, man. Bill is here uh, with us. Uh, we're going to take ourselves a uh, quick break, and we'll be right back after this. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's the Love Line. I'm Adam, that's Dr. Drew. Bill Nye, the science guy, is uh, in here tonight. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Bill, a uh, breath of fresh air. <sighs> I normally uh, don't have people with more than a junior college education uh, inhabit that seat you're in, Bill, but uh, it's I nice to have it. some I brains. I can feel it sucking it out of me. You feeling yeah. yourself getting dumber by the moment? Uh-huh. See? <laughs> Bill uh, is, uh, is working on a new show. Yep. That's the eyes that. of Nye. Right. The eye of Nye. In the, yeah, I guess. but the eyes of Nye, the way you say it, it actually it rolled off yeah, pretty good. It's better okay. alliteration there. Yeah. Plus, when you see the graphic, I got, it's no question, I have two eyes. And this show's going to go uh, back onto uh, PBS. That's the plan. And uh, it's, uh, it's uh, going to go in uh, September? Yes, yes. Oh, and what Bill has uh, been doing, now this is not a kid's show. Nope. In fact, one of the shows is about addiction. And that's where Dr. Drew comes in. He's a star. He's strung out on glue, and you're trying to it watch seemed, him. I think it was glue. You can't tell. You're a heroin no, addict. I'm not as experienced it was, as you guys. Um, gasoline. And they're, and they're following <laughs> Drew around and uh, seeing how he operates and uh, his patients and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is going to be a nighttime show. Uh, nominally, what you call access. But is it, is, it, is it going to be... Um, my book so, will be Is this out 20 there. questions? My, my what book do you want will to be out you got to plug my book. Uh, heck, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can plug your good. book. Yeah, hit me the ball. Oh, by the way, you know, i got a new book out. You do? About dinosaurs. Nice, Go on. Nice plug for yeah, Drew's sure. book, by the way. We'll get Drew's book out. <laughs> you got a book about dinosaurs? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Is this it? Yeah. Any, yeah. Any, 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 any revelations in here? Well, just birds are dinosaurs. But when you look at modern birds, we're looking at uh, direct descendants of ancient dinosaurs. And you say, why bother? Why bother figuring that out? Who cares? Yeah, that's well, why I know, was thinking that. I wasn't the more you study these ancient animals, the more you learn about modern ecosystems. Who hmm. cares? Yes. Now, Bill, that was me, a recording. Speak, speaking, speaking, of, speaking of books or uh, birds, let me yeah. tell you my idea I had mm. the other day. Uh huh. Oh. And you tell me if you think this is uh, feasible scientifically. Okay, sure, sure. I was thinking about, first off, birds are mean. People don't yeah. know how mean birds yeah, are. Yeah, heck, yes, they are. People like birds. You Some know? birds, yeah. People are like, oh, it's a good bird. They're good looking. They're great. Yeah. You know? But you think about birds for a second. They'll first, come after you. You see the movie? We're, Where have you been? We're going back to a crow discussion here, I Yeah, believe. crows yes? are aggressive, man. Okay. Smart. Now, They'll take you out. Here's my plan. People have birds. Your eyes I, I have out. friends that birds make <laughs> the world's worst pets, by the way. People have birds for 10 years. They go in to put their hand in to get them to the sit bird on. Bites them. The bird bites them. Heck yeah. And then you know what they got? Them. They what? got a bird brain, okay? They got no brains. Yeah, birds. okay, so deal. I worked at a gym. Good eyesight. I worked at a gym that had a macaw. This thing, this thing's the world's scariest parrot, these macaws. And first thing, this thing, this macaw would just let out these screams for no good reason. Ah! Yeah, but but ten of those. You'd okay. crap yourself. <laughs> also, here's what this macaw used to like to do. It used to like to, uh, this, this uh, gym had a boxing ring. 
And I'd be in the boxing ring, and I'd be training with somebody, and this macaw would, would walk, would get off its perch, would walk all the way across the gym, and it would craw- crawl up the ring. It would crawl up the ropes. Onto the mm-hmm. turnbuckles. Like onto the, the onto the top turnbuckle. Then it would walk all the way around, and it would go to my little plastic stopwatch that I was using, and it would put its beak right through it and smash it. Mm-hmm. And it did this to three stopwatches of mine, by the way. But, but You're just, wearing just gloves, a, Mean-spirited right? just, bird. Just curious, when you saw it, for the 20 minutes it took to get around the outside of the ring, why didn't you stop it from going over to the stopwatch? Here's, here's what would happen every time. I would see the bird walking toward the yeah, ring, and I would say, you. all right, I got 10 minutes. It's going to take this bird a little while, mm-hmm. and then I would get in my thing. And then I would see it get up on the turnbuckle, yeah. and I would think, all right, I got about two minutes here. Let me just finish the round out. And then I would turn around to the cracking sound mm-hmm. of my... Whatever. Anyway, and eventually I started leaving a decoy stopwatch <laughs> out for the thing, the one that it broke before. But Did it work? Was that effective? No, it would just go, it, it, it knew the one that didn't work and would go after the one that worked. It, birds are mean. So here's yeah, my no plan. Question. I had this plan a couple mm-hmm. of weeks ago. I started studying crows and realizing how territorial they are and how Absolutely. mean they are and yeah. how whenever a bird flies in the airspace, a whole gang of them jump. They're, yeah, like, yeah. they're like flying crips mm-hmm. is what they are. They're yeah, like a yeah, black yeah. gang. They just go after yeah, anyone yeah. in their turf. And then I thought... You know, I see these dolphins the military uses mm-hmm. and the seals and the dogs at the airport. Let's start using crows for law enforcement. Let's have attack crows. Well, Somebody was telling me that these things had big brains. That that, that they could work, that but they're, I think they're, I don't know how trainable they are. They're kind of honory. Somebody was saying. Somebody, you let us know how that goes. Somebody was saying <laughs> that. That that crows had a uh, brain weight to body weight ratio that was second uh, only to us, which I know they don't weigh much, skeptical. so it doesn't doesn't take much. Well, you know. But then someone called in and said they were one of the top creatures in terms of in, in terms of knowledge they, or something. Well, well, their ability. Knowledge. Well, I mean, their ability, knowledge, ability to behavioral. They're, they're, they're crafty. Yeah, crafty. Yeah, crafty. Yeah, crafty. They're crafty. Okay. They'll they'll pick up a bug and drop it so it cracks on the ground yeah, and we'll then go down and do eat that. it yeah, and yeah. stuff like that. All right, so. We train these crows, uh-huh. okay? Yes. And then when there's some standoff situation yes, like Bob. this uh, a-hole that's mm-hmm. sitting on a tractor in a fountain somewhere mm-hmm. for two days, mm-hmm. unleash the crows. Yeah. The crows can converge on this guy. Everyone runs when crows come at him, yeah, by the way. Yeah, you saw Tippy Hendren. Yeah, I don't care if you're... <laughs> she was in the movie The Crows. <laughs> I don't care if you're... Bird. No, the bird. I think I mean, the seagulls birds. in that case, but that's all right. All right. Cool. I don't care cool. if you're holding a shotgun... A bunch of crows come at you, throw your gun and run. Yeah, you do. Hostage situations. I love it. Send out the crows. Yes. People start. Send in the crows. People okay, start yeah. giving up just at the threat of the crows. When they see the crow van pull up, it's <laughs> like, oh, I'm turning myself in. It's over. Oh, right. by the way. I believe we could train crows. All right. All right. Okay, just the way it's the way we do with dogs to sniff out gunpowder drugs. I'll get some falconers drugs. to. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're not bad, but crows scarier than falcons. Oh God, hell yes! Making Heavens. that noise, then by the stars, surveillance crows. Oh man, buzzing around. You know, we I see, I see the crows saw? van with the O with the sight in it across here. Yes, the the o. Oh, that's <laughs> right. That's good, yes, Drew. Yes, yes, yeah, good. and it'll be crow response. Yeah, we overwhelming get some, some, some yeah. kind of acronym, <laughs> yeah. acronym yeah, yeah. that spelled th- what crows, they were. At. Yeah, <laughs> which I always find ridiculous because let's just call the goddamn things crows. That's what they are in the first place. But yeah. special weapons assault team. Right. Then we spin off into a series. I'm the crow command leader. <laughs> all right, we'll work all this. You play out. by your own rules. That's the crows right. Rules, the crows rules. <laughs> no, the crows play by their own rules. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll yeah. work this out. But. In but a world. What do you what do you think about my attack crow idea? It's all right. As a man of science. It's just all right. All right. I think just you might right. have some problems managing them. We, we would be a better idea if it was your idea. You'd have to, well, no, you, just getting them to do your bidding, I think you'll find I think we overcome that hurdle. Okay. If we overcome that hurdle, With then what? we're talking. With drugs. Crow drugs. Ooh, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. There you go. Okay. All right. So uh, you know, Bill's got stuff to talk about, but I don't care because we got to take one call this Let's break. do that. And then, you know, we go to commercial. I talk to him more about crows. Jameson? Yes. Wait a minute. We talked to Jameson. I oh, beg your pardon. All right, you got to get a sponsor, buddy. I mean, i got to get a sponsor for this crow idea. Yeah, yeah. The Navy. <laughs> yeah. It goes easy. Andrew? Yeah? You're 16? Yep. What's up? Um, yeah, I have a question for Drew. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know if it's true, because um, I was talking to my friend the other day, and he told me that he was, like, with this girl, and she said that she was more hornier when she's on her period. And I just want to know if that's true, that some, some girls are more hornier. Or other some women period. are, and it's primarily the inst- the influence of estrogen late in their cycle. Mm-hmm. Uh, some women... 
feel that way late in pregnancy too, again, because of the congestion down there and also the, again, high levels of progesterone. Some women are shut down by progesterone, so it makes things worse that time. But humans are one of the only mammals that don't have estrus. They don't have a time when they're ready to reproduce. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's one of the evolutionary mysteries is yeah. why would you have this thing set up where people don't, where a woman doesn't know whether or not she's pregnant. Or could get possibly pregnant. Become pregnant. Right, right. right. Well, and so it uh, doesn't know when she's going to become pregnant right. and so on. And it's generally agreed right now, right, that it's it's part of the subterfuge that makes soap operas. <laughs> try to get, try to, you want to optimize, the woman wants to optimize her um, choices. choices of getting the best, yeah. best mate. Yeah. Bill. The mystery is what makes the world go round. Be honest, please. Yeah. You have used your uh, degree, your experience, your engineering to try to build a woman in your basement. Have you not? No. no. Have you not? The movie Weird Science was originally called The Bill Nye Story. <laughs> I, I believe that all super smart guys at one point or another dreamed of building a woman that they could keep in the basement. No, Never? no, no. Wait, it's, it's way too complicated. complicated. Yeah. yeah, but Bill actually could I wrote a comedy. No, you, gotta, you didn't hear what he said? It's the exact opposite. You thought about doing it. He realized it was too complicated and gave up immediately. But there wasn't See? some point where you needed like 80 feet of fallopian tubing <laughs> down in your basement no. with ratchets and things. No, 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 no. You're, you're cameraman losing his ass well, here. Well, the thing <laughs> of it, right. you, you know, the, just to look at the, um, take a watch apart. Look how complicated that is. Yeah. Uh, it's not even one oh, cell, man. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, not even, even your cell. Golgi apparatus. It's not even, it's not and even a, forget about taking it apart. Try to hump it. Oh, for God's sake! See, that's where you and I are different. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. All we'll, right. we'll pick that up when we get back after this. Hey, everybody! It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Doctor Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Bill Nye, the Science Guy, in here, the multi Emmy Award winning Bill Nye. <coughs> that's Drew uh, hacking in the I background. <laughs> And uh, when we left off, were we uh, selling anybody before we uh, went to break? There was something about you guys were entering into a discussion about well, as far as I can go. Bill was jealous of my crow idea, and yes, I think that's yes. where we left yeah, off. Yes. He was angry. Heart. Yeah. Yeah. He stole it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Scooped him. The, the, the program, the drugged crows that would attack the bad guys. Yeah. Don't, you, don't you think, though, we, we, we can, uh, we yeah. can uh, treat... We can train most animals just through using food, you know, pretty much. You know, I uh, figured yeah. we could do that. But with I think the crows. you'll find crows are especially honored. You to let us know. But that's that's, that's why I want them for the yeah, mission. Yeah, you yeah, understand? Yeah. Well, so <clears throat> imagine training spiders. Uh, yeah, it's insects not, are a little different. Well, yeah, it's not an insect, but it's it's I mean, challenging. No, I, it, it would and be. It's comforting but, to think. Speaking of love line. Yeah. Okay, you look at a crow's brain, it's pretty small, right? Right. Consider a spider's brain yeah. right. or, or a dragonfly. They're microscopic. Are they? And, well, I mean, and yet they conduct their lives. They have sex. They carry on. They produce more spiders, more dragonflies. All this other stuff we got is just... So much, so much uh It's just epilogue. so much extra stuff yeah. just to compete with each other. It makes you crazy out there, I'm telling you. Hey, still thinking about building that woman, though. Huh? <laughs> silk, silk. Yeah, Silk, yeah. did you uh, you called a couple days ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Unacceptable. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I have a few questions for Mr. Bill Nye. Yeah, Silk. All right. Well, uh, my first one is, uh, what yeah. are the problems in uh, traveling through outer space? So, are you serious? Mm-hmm. So, do you have access to a computer? Yeah. A television? Yeah. So, uh, the problem with space is, it's a vacuum. <laughs> so, you have to take your own air. Now, it's like a camping trip, a complicated camping trip. You can't go back to get anything that you've forgotten. Right. And as you may know, getting back from outer space into the Earth can be very difficult. You know, we just blew up a space shuttle. Was uh, now so that's is that, was that what you're really asking me? It's a vacuum. There's no air. So that's the first thing you've got to deal with. Then the sunlight's hot. Sunlight, when you're in the dark, it's cold. It's just a hassle, man. But compared to going to the bottom of the ocean, I must tell you, much oh, easier. Oh, really? Oh, it's really? much easier. Yeah, you, I mean, get a pair of binoculars. You're exploring the surface of the moon. Go to the, you know, even rudimentary depths, 10 feet down, you drown. <laughs> what? It's going to turn into a shelly Ten feet, I meant three meters. Sudden. I was kidding. All right, yeah, you should be talking in terms of meters and yeah. trees. Stay with the CCs. <laughs> I'm going to go with the Smurfs ant ass hairs as uh, <laughs> yeah. units of measurement. Shocking. So, so but that's, that's how you measure in construction. So. Smurfs ass hairs. Okay. Well, it's usually a sea hair. I know, on, yeah, on a sea hair. I used to work in a machine shop. Real yeah, familiar. guys like that. But let's talk about the uh, exploration of uh, the ocean. Uh, uh, what, uh, 
how, what percentage, I don't mean what percentage have we canvassed or covered, but is there a bunch of stuff that we don't know that's going on out there? Yeah, you see, uh, one of the things of global climate change, people say, is the earth going to get colder or warmer? Is the earth going to get uh, uh, more stormy or less stormy? Is what we going to have? In the Eocene period, you know, we had uh, palm trees in what's now British Columbia. So are we going to have that same situation? And all that heat that comes from the sun and will be trapped in the Earth's atmosphere is regulated by what, Adam? The ocean. Yes, the bing, crows. Bing, bing. My brilliant <laughs> crows, my pretties. And so, for example, if the Gulf Stream were to stop, mm -hmm. which has been speculated by certain climate scientists. Oh, really? Stop, if the Gulf Stream were to stop streaming, mm -hmm. Europe would be cold and icy and Good. Chicagoic. Good. them. And would just, well, you say that, but they have big armies and they have people to feed and they have stuff. It would just be, it would be a hassle. Yeah. Well, and so we'll studying the ocean is one valuable uh, way to spend your days. And and what do you think about uh, space exploration uh, versus uh, the ocean exploration? Well, you got to do both. I know you both. can do both. You got to I mean, do both. You're into both of it. I Absolutely. Because it's all about exploration. So people say to me, yeah. Adam, I mean Bill, they right. say, hey, man, we can't explore space. Uh, we have to pay teachers. Right. We have to build school. That's right. Okay, but if you're a politician, and I know some of you are, uh, the idea is not to choose between going to a war in a, on a foreign soil or pay teachers. The choice is not do we build new schools or visit Mars with a robot. No, you have to do everything at once. That's your job, Mr. Ms. Politician, which you've got to figure out. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to exploration, you have to do as much as you can. You see, now let me just tell you, mm -hmm. May 30th, and June 25th, we are sending two rovers to Mars. Are you guys down with us? You all mm -hmm. over this? And they're going to land on Mars in two different places. They're going to screw around in there in what looks to be... When are they going to land on Mars? Uh, January, February 2004. Set, punch it, pedal to the metal, all the uh, gunpowder you can get going at once. Seven months to Mars. Mm -hmm. That's when the orbits are favorable. Sure. Uh, sure they are. And so uh, you land in what we believe to be these ancient lakes. If we were to find fossil bacteria... Mm -hmm. in these lakes. Mm -hmm. That would change everything. Why? Because then people would really have to ask themselves, what does it take to have life? You just want these uh, these these creationists to shut the hell up for a change. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, you, you don't like these Bible-toning retards anymore, and we do, right? <laughs> you just want these The Earth's 2,000 years old. That's you want real these hard. to that's shut up, hard. It's, it's bad. Yeah. It's <laughs> bad for business in Kansas a couple of years ago. You know, businesses would not do, would not open factories in Kansas because the school board was so wacky. Yeah. With regard to creationism. Yeah, yeah. we we should, we should, we, you believe, like I believe, we give a little too much respect to these tards, right? Uh, these these religious people, they, uh, whether they're Shiite Muslims or born again Christians, I'll need to be told to shut up. No well, they're, they're very on influential. Their they're yeah, very influential. They're influential on their own fellow tards. But no, not all right. Smart people don't believe any of that crap. You're an atheist, right, Bill? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it always it, it's it always strikes me once in a while a smart guy is really into Jesus, and uh, and I I wonder about that. Well, me lose a the, the experience of transcendence can be import, an important human experience. Right, right. And you don't have to believe or not believe it as a reality. You just have to have the experience. And, and by and, the and way, protect that experience. Hmm. I'm not going to try to one-up anybody, but I'm a pretty reverent guy. Yes. When I look at the world around me, at nature and so on. And uh, what were you talking about earlier? The robot? No, uh, at uh, people, right. women and men. It is pretty astonishing. It is. Nature is pretty astonishing. But Worthy respect. I, I always I look at that as nature, not as uh, not as a guy. But uh, you, as a scientist, must love the argument when people go, "Well, then, how did all this get here?" If, if not for <laughs> one guy in sandals, <laughs> like, wow, are you stupid? Yeah. All right, but let me ask you this, like Bill. Norwegian. Here's something I was thinking about too uh, the other day. I was watching uh, this Discovery Channel or History. I don't know what it was. And they were talking about stealth technology. A huge fan. And it is a marvelous technology. Well, it's 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 not that uh, hard. Uh, the ideas are not that hard. The execution is quite difficult. Okay. But go ahead. Right. Thanks for that. It is, it well, you get a plane who has edges that right. don't reflect radar back to where it's coming from. Right. You just got to coat a surface with stuff that absorbs radar rather than reflects. Just got to figure out a way to make that object go, you know, a thousand miles an hour yeah. and or six hundred subsonic. Yeah. Carry a bunch of uh, well, our, our ordnance, bunch yeah. of ordnance. But isn't the uh, isn't the, the stealth fighter supersonic? Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Stealth is just below. 
Yeah. We'll look into that. Well, anyway, if you go supersonic and stealth, uh, you're going to go through a lot of gas. You're going to see the needle move. So, you know, you really? don't normally fly in that configuration. All right. Fair enough. Bet that, but the bet exhaust the is supersonic. Super All right. So here's your point. I, I was thinking, man, the technology is incredible with this. It's just, with, with your this tax stuff. dollars at work. And then I thought to myself, you know, I've lived in L.A. They've been talking about this bullet train to Vegas. Since <laughs> God, I, it would be since cool. Been be in the, so cool. Since I've been in the seventh grade. Yeah. Hit me the ball. Can't we get it? Here's all I'm saying. The technology that's going into the military is absolutely, uh, I mean, we, we lead the world in this. Absolutely. Yet the same crappy RTD bus is uh, lumbering down <laughs> hey, the man. street. Vote. Where's the bullet train? Vote. Why aren't we building well, this bullet train? You're the same train? guy the other night was having trouble with the microwaves, right? Yeah. I want a microwave <laughs> that can handle tinfoil. Can't no, you? No, no, Einstein's dude. come we up with a, that already. Infrared. 30 years of this. Can't you come up with something? Uh, well. You can't come up with this. Uh, no, dude. No improvements conduct, on the microwave oven conduct, since 1971. Well, huge improvements compared what? to the size. What, the handle? Power. The Klystron. Oh, yeah, oh much please. Smaller so than what? So a thing of bean stays in there 10 seconds less. BFD. Uh, I want to be able to put foil in that microwave. Now get busy. And leave, you know, <laughs> guys like you, vote on Wednesday and right. uh, no. don't buckle your safety belt. How dare you? I don't vote. All right. I tell everybody you got to vote. What are we? You want the bullet train? You got to vote. What are we gonna do about this microwave and the bullet train and my crows? Uh, The crows, you're on your own. All right, but what are we gonna do about the microwave? I think that's uh, user education. And uh, the bullet train. What do you, you mean use your education? I mean you're a ditz. Oh. Don't put the flipping metal I in wanna, the microwave. I want to be able to put. A, I want to be able to put a hungry man in no, there. No, no, you look at a radar dish out on your neighbor's porch. Okay, it does it has holes in it, but what's it made of? Anyone? It's made of metal. Okay, because yeah. it not only does it conduct electricity anyway, right. it reflects it. All right, okay? I would have said that. But I was so it drink. reflects the microwaves. All right, you can, there's nothing we can do. And of course, often, especially in circles, circular objects like the rim of a bowl, right, you get a resonance. You get a well. Let, let's okay. <laughs> let's call it something else. Like but feedback. let's work out a way to heat things that that can handle Dude, metal like that don't bowl. involve flame. Are you one no. of these guys on the screen here? Buy a bowl without the metal in it. <laughs> no, they sell them. They don't. And once in a while, you leave the fork in there when you're stoned. Yeah, yeah, of course you do. That's all I'm saying. Another problem I don't Get have. busy. Yeah. Stop talking about your theory and get busy on my microwave you and my bullet, bullet train. train. You I gotta want vote. the bullet train. You gotta vote. vote for who? Who's running on the bullet train platform? She'll show up. She'll show up. She'll show up. The broads don't know anything about Mary, that. 18. I mean, you're a ditz. Mary? Yeah. Hi, what's up? Nothing. Thank you for calling the show. Oh, You're welcome. Getting hotter in here. Can you expand on that, Mary? What's up, baby doll? Um, I had a question for Doctor Drew. Yeah. Um, I, my boyfriend and I have been having sex recently, and he's been coming inside me and not pulling out. Mm-hmm. And are you now, pregnant? I will. I don't. I don't know. I should Do probably get a test right now, but I smell like. And I've been. Last time I got tested was November sixth. I don't have any STDs. But well, like you I, you do now. You have something. You have at least a vaginal infection. And it, that, and while it may not be sort of a classical STD, it is probably it sounds like something you got contracted from him. It might be something called trichomonas. He's he's completely clean though. Also, how does how does he know that? He's been tested. No, he's not been tested for this. I guarantee you, he hasn't. Are you trying to get pregnant? Um. Not necessarily. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Well, well, you're going to get pregnant. What's wrong with you? Are you stupid? <laughs> no. It's... you got to be stupid. You're 18. You don't care. Like, sorry, well, if I get pregnant, I get pregnant. If I don't, I don't. It's just, it's a long story. And <laughs> I got time. Well, no, because it happened before and I had an abortion and I don't want to have an abortion again. So, so wouldn't that be smart then to use contraception? Well, yeah. <laughs> By the way, I, I love when our retarded callers try to corner us with yeah. the world's worst logic. Like you're gonna go, oh, wanted to get wanted to get an abortion in my. I see, touche, touche. <laughs> well, <laughs> now you don't I stand want an abortion. Cor- I stand corrected. I apologize. Let's move forward. What what's wrong with you? Nothing. You're, you're gonna get pregnant. You already had an abortion. Yeah, I know. It's. All right. Let's just do me a favor. If, if and when you get pregnant, either have an abortion or give the kid up for adoption. For adoption, that would be fine. Now, tomorrow when you go to have your pelvic exam so they can find out what kind of infection this is, which it definitely is, and they may actually treat you without an exam. They're creams now. They're very simple to, to clear this up. Yeah, you need a pregnancy right. test, and you need some contraception. All right? Okay. 
All right. All right. But Mary. it's an infection. He'll need to be treated, too. And get 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 some contraception. Serious, you, please. Okay. What's the matter? <laughs> I, me having an infection, I just got tested. That's the only thing. All it's right. a vaginal okay. infection. It's a, it's a, do just, nothing. Wait a do minute. Nothing. Wait, 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 wait. Who cares? Do nothing. I hope your vagina falls this off. This will not be the... And have a thousand kids. I'll pay for all of them. This will not be the now, last... I don't get my bullet train because i got to pay for all their crappy <laughs> this kids. This will not be the last vaginitis you Suck get. My it's a common, on that common hers. thing. And while it's transmitted back and forth between... Males and females. Oh, what not she a, cares? She not knows often she's not fine. a classic sexually transmitted She's fine. Disease. She was crying about the thought of having a vaginal infection, which is nothing. She was I don't crying. think she was crying. Yes, she about, was. Was she crying? Yeah. I think she was crying about this, Mary. whatever it is with her boyfriend. Mary? Yeah. What are you doing? Are you crying? No, I'm not crying. I'm laughing. It's kind I, of hard to believe. All right. I, I, all right. I, I don't think she was crying. Yeah. Look, she's a genius. What does she need you for, Drew? Just that. Uh, Call the show. Don't listen to Drew and crank out some kids. Have fun in your trailer. <laughs> Keith. Hey, fellas. Idiots. Enough of people. <laughs> Believe we gotta we gotta start a railroad. That my bullet train. We gotta put these idiots to work. You know my plan is to build a, a railroad that just circles uh, the the entire United States. Doesn't stop anywhere. Just, just runs me. into itself. Does nothing but keep idiots busy. Keith. Yo, what's up? You're 23. I am. What's up? Yeah, hey, I had a question for Mr. Bill Nye over there. Yeah. Um, I'm just um, a big fan of yours, and I actually um, used to live in Seattle and watched a really great show called Almost Live. Oh, yes. Those were the days. Yeah. Yes. And um, I just, I, I really loved the show. It was the first time I ever saw you. Great, great sketches. And Thank you. I Thank just, you. I just want to know if you, you know, if you ever kept in touch with the cast or had oh, yeah, yeah, those yeah. Were good times for you. So John Keister is working <laughs> On my new show, he writes material for it. He's doing. He's brilliant. Excellent. Bob Nelson's submitting material. I mean, he's writing. He's running the. Sh he's great. He's amazing. He, the guy is amazing. And uh, I haven't talked to Ross Schaefer for. Um, it's been over a week now. <laughs> but yeah, I'm in real close touch with Ross. If you remember Ross Schaefer, so John and Bob are still brilliant. They're amazing. That's and from cool. time, I talked to Nancy Guppy a few months ago. Yeah, everybody's doing great. It's well, uh, been doing very well. Good well, stuff. And uh, Steve Wilson, have a coffee with him uh, quite often. Is there a seventh guy we haven't heard of mm -hmm. that uh, you could bring Well, up? yeah, he, he and I are bonding. Keith and I are having a little uh, Seattle moment, yes, okay? It's, it's nostalgic. Keith. So, yeah, it's good stuff. But, Keith, did you call for some other reason? Um, no, I just I just want to tell you that I really I dug the show back oh, in cool. the day, and I, uh, you're you're great. Well, well watch uh, watch his new show if, uh, if it gets turn picked it up, up loud. Absolutely. All right? All, All right, right thanks, man. Yeah, Take good time. Uh, and why wouldn't uh, PBS uh, pick up your new show? Really, with all their well, competition? I, I, mean, I don't see any reason they wouldn't. But right. uh, the They're deal's not do done, it. and we, you know, we don't. Uh, How's the pay over there at PBS? No Is it comment. decent? It's not great. I, I don't it's want okay. it to be good. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. All right. I, find out what Huel Hauser's making. Do you know who that is? <laughs> PBS, it's the, the world's uh, it, it, like Huel Hauser. If he showed up at a party, you'd you you put an ice pick in his ear, like ten seconds. He'd be the mo he's the most boring guy in the world. He's been on PBS for thirty years. It is grand and beautiful. And that's oh, yeah. him on like three uh, cappuccinos too. <laughs> that's him he, describing the grand ballroom. That's him describing the grand ballroom. It, it is, is grand, grand and, and beautiful. Yeah. I guess we're lucky you didn't use Grand for a second time. Yeah. Do you watch? Do you watch Fuel House? No. You don't no, know the man. No, no. I figured they'd have like a statue of him up in front of people. Maybe they do. But I, I've never noticed it. You've not been down to World Headquarters there. Uh, World Headquarters, yeah, in Braddock on Braddock Road in Virginia. Been there. Is that? No evidence of a no, statue. Of, just a lot yeah. of lesbians pissed off. Uh, no, it's kind of suburban, kind yeah. of a strip mallicle out there. I went into. Uh, in well, there's a subway stop though. There's a train oh, stop. Train. Kind of a bullet train. I wanted... Kind of DC's bullet train. Oh. How did it get there? Uh, right. They, they voted. voted. That's they right. voted, they for voted for the train. For now you go, hey. I went into uh, NPR's uh, studios, uh, National Public Radio, a few weeks ago. It was spectacular. Yeah. And I thought, where are they getting all this goddamn money? Why do we got to operate out Midland. of this dump? <laughs> and they, they have this castle to do their, their show. It's, it's, it's shrine to radio. It's, it's, it's really, it's, it's 75,000 square feet and state-of-the-art studios. What's going on? Mm. Do you understand? Shouldn't we be in a nicer place than NPR? Hmm. Okay. Drew, Drew agrees. Let's talk to... Uh, I'm just thinking all the money from uh, our program goes to us. It does? Not all of it. Please. Really? 
Where else are they going? Well, how much? Uh, well, Ann's back there. Westwood, Westwood Brian. One's got to make a lot of money, right? I guess. Yeah, they don't put anything back. Elizabeth? Hi. You're 30? Yes. What's up? How are you guys doing? Good. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm kind of actually embarrassed. Um, okay. There's a... I'm a recovering alcoholic. I've been sober for 16 months. I have worked. I'm still in the program. I still go to meetings. I've worked the steps with a sponsor. Right. Um, and that works. Adam, that works. Listen sponsors to her. are so important. Sponsors are so important. Listen, okay. I, I, was, I, have, okay. I have a say, saying, no, no sponsor, no treatment. Very simple. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, but here's the situation about... For about two and a half years, yeah. I was separated from my husband until recently we got back together. We got back together in November. Um, we never did get a divorce. Um, he's a very nice guy, a very normal person. He took care of our six-year-old son for a very long time, obviously, because <laughs> I wasn't really with it. Um, uh, our, since we've gotten can I, can back I just together, for a second? The way she described yeah. that, I'm, I'm tr- having trouble understanding what happened. What do you mean you're six-year-old and he's currently six years old? My son is currently six. And he, through most of his life, has been under the care of his dad. Yes. Okay. Well, 16, and yeah. a, 16 months I mean, ago, he was under the care of his dad. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. can't and focus I mean, because of the oppressive heat in here. Okay. My brain is uh, boiling also, in its own juices. <laughs> Anderson, can you turn the... There's, I know, you can't turn the air conditioning on because it, it ironically freezes up every time you turn and it on. It catches fire. Good. We, we, can we about? burn this hell hole down? <laughs> stick with, stick <laughs> with. They don't right. trust me with it anymore. There's like a, a code just turn it on, please. Turn it on. If it catches there's on a, fire, it doesn't. It catches there's on a fire. It doesn't work. I don't anymore. know the code. We can't do it anymore. So, Elizabeth, finish up. Here we go. So, okay, so you're back with your husband. Okay. Yes, we're back together. And you know, when when I was drinking and I did use some too, but alcohol was my drug of choice. Um, I acted out a lot sexually, mm. and now I don't. <laughs> We, the only problem that we have right now, really, you know, we've worked on a lot of stuff, is that I just don't feel like I'm getting the sex that I want. <laughs> and I don't know if maybe I'm still trying to act out that way, yeah. or if, um, you know, he's 30 years old, you know. I, you know, I know Adam is weird, but, you know, most 30-year-old guys, they're starting to go down, and they're sick. <laughs> no, not really. No. Not no. really? No. Oh, okay. No, ma'am. No. no. <laughs> okay. 47, though, man, oh, it's man. over. Oh, Woo. yeah. Forget it. <laughs> One um, foot in the grave. You ever see that guy, uh, the, the the coyote, and he, he goes over the cliff? Wiley and Coyote? Like puff. It's yeah. Like puff. That's what I'm looking at. I'm looking up from there. <laughs> That's what I'm looking hey, at. You're holding yeah. a sign up. Yeah. 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 Eliz- I saw him a long time ago. It was two or, three, two or three frames ago. Elizabeth. Yes. Is, uh, you think your husband is paying you back a little bit? Like Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, here's what I think. Maybe with holding a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Are you are you a trauma survivor? You know what? I, I feel like I should be. I don't. I can't remember anything in but my. But you're past. sort of you're behaving like one, right? I behave one. Are, are, like are you working on? Are you, are you going to therapist in addition to your sponsor? Um. No, I have like a group session thingy, but I don't see anybody one on one. You though. might want to look into that because there some, okay. might be something here. Either you are still sort of acting out a piece of your a remnant of your disease. Which uh-huh. is in order to be sexual, that's a sort of disavowed, shamed aspect of yourself that you can only connect with in a highly arousing and non-intimate situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> and that's therapy time if that's what's that's happening. Very true. And, and okay. also too, uh, guys get a little freaked out when they feel nutty coming well, at their penis. Well, there's a, this is, the problem is not their husband. The problem is her. No, and, I, I, I know that, but I'm saying he will shut down even more when okay. he feels that nutty energy coming at him. Yeah, that's true. See, but, and, and I see that happening. Hold on. Hold on. Right. 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 Don't, don't, right. God damn it. What? Uh, the, the other possibility <laughs> here. Just tell her what you got to tell the, her. The, we got to so go to break. I got to dip my head in the goddamn right. toilet. Right. It's 90 right. degrees right. and it's right. dumb. All right. Hades. But listen, so so Bill's coming undone over here. So, oh my God, his bow tie bow tie's it's just like, gonna take his underpants like, off. In there a should, should have been a sound effect. Like, I mean, you're, you're a dit. There should have been a do your yoing sound when the bow tie came off. Just tell her what you got to tell her. Listen, she, she confirmed the myself. fact that for her to be sexual is is a shaming experience, and she can't be intimate and sexual. These are disavowed aspects of self that if she's gonna re reintegrate again with, she's gonna need therapy. Or the other possibility, and or. She has grown in sobriety. Her husband has not, and it is expressing itself in their intimate relationship now because she has grown into a different person in the process of recovery. He has not kept up with that growth, 
and that can feel pretty funny right. when you try to. I think I think it's the former. I, I think she's I she's off the booze, but she still has the remnants stuff going on going on, and yeah. she's freaking him out. And he may be paying her back a little, a little bit, bit for being all so that, permissive. It's all surface stuff. Yeah. Bill Nye, the science guy, is here. He's uh, down to his wife beater and boxer shorts. We can. Oh, look! I can see a sock garter. <laughs> we'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be back. Buddy, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Bill Nye, the science guy, is here. Bill, you should uh, you should stop by on a more regular basis. Why, I'd love to. Yeah, I mean, if something happens, fill us in on uh, what's going on. We got those uh, probes going to Mars. You can... Yeah, it's cool. It's going to be quite a thing. And it's uh, the cost of a uh, fancy cup of coffee per taxpayer. Oh, really? $350 million bucks. It is but nothing. Yeah. And so, no, really, I mean, compared yeah. to the way, like, for example, the way we spend money on this war, mm. it's a, a drop in the proverbial bucket. Yeah. And so uh, if we discover what we don't know, people say, why are you going to go to Mars? What are you going to discover? We don't know. That's why we're going. It's a new horizon. Right. And uh, if we discover... Didn't we get something on the Mars? Well, we have a couple things. Yeah. Three things. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. There's nothing there. Well, well the they, found, they found this thing that might have been a bacteria. Oh, man. ALH-84-001. Yeah. yeah. It's this meteorite that has these little patterns in it that may be fossil bacteria. I'm not talking about fossil dinosaur, ancient dinosaurs. I'm talking about bacteria. So what would it... What? Let's just say the uh, the probe went up there and it did find, find some fossil bacteria. That would be astonishing. What would it mean? Well, you ever heard of panspermia? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ron rent, uh, rented that. that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I had that guy. Ron Jeremy yeah. was in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah it was terrific. It was really Pansperm, a yeah. produced, but Yes. So the idea is that l life started on Mars. Mm -hmm. Primordial Mars had more favorable conditions. It had a better atmosphere. The premise, mm -hmm. not asserting this. Right. Saying it, could, it's, it is not beyond the pale. Right. Had a uh, better atmosphere. This and that had liquid water. Life starts on Mars. Three billion years ago, gets hit by a meteorite. Mm-hmm. Comes spiraling or, or into comet, the sun. Maybe, right? uh, comet, yeah, yeah uh, uh, something. inner space, something rocky yeah. thing, smash right. into planetism, gizmo. Comes hurtling around in orbit, the orbit decays, 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 gets sucked in <laughs> by the Earth's gravity. Here it is, lands on the Earth. It's still got the DNA cell kind of life going on it, like a virus can survive. Right. And uh, you know, freeze dried in space, comes back, and we're all here, like uh -huh. we started as Martians. So not so beyond the pale. <clears throat> so, so really, life is an, or a super accident because yeah, that's right. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah, it makes it just like oh my, oh, it makes it oh uh, just beyond astonishing. Then furthermore, how do you find uh, something from Mars? Well, sure, you go to Antarctica. Most things that land on the Earth from Mars, from this primordial collision, fall where? Uh, at the one of the in poles. the ocean, they fall in the, in the ocean. ocean. Yeah, you the don't ocean. see them. They yeah. go to the bottom of the ocean. Very hard to find. But when they land in Antarctica, yes, when they land in Antarctica. They land on this icy surface, and they are dark rocks. I mean, it's this simple. Easier so guys find. walking around in Antarctica, they go to this place, an area called the Budget Space Probe. It's an area where the ice is ablated. Oh, yeah, it's burned off by the wind, and it exposes these rocks. And there they are, and they pick them up. They look at the shock patterns in the uh, rock under a microscope. It looks just like the Martian, Martian uh, smash. And you crack them open, you get atmosphere that is just Martian. It's well, Martian atmosphere. What about the uh, possibility that uh, was, was all the rage a few years ago of something large hitting this planet? And oh, man. It might have been Mars. If I am working down the road, the <laughs> we would be looking for those just a little more aggressively than we are now. We're not... We're not doing what we can do. Yeah, well, we could do a little more. Now, this is when I say a little more, I'd like to spend, let us say, for example, three decades, mm -hmm. 30 years. In the, back, in the background, keep an eye on rocks in space. There's a Star Trek, sure, very good premise. Lame movie, lame movies. Sure. Uh, but they're but, the uh, premise great is Great conventions, not, right, well, Bill? Well, Fantastic. Well, <laughs> they, were, they are when you're young. All right. Yeah, they are when you're young. And then uh, the... Um, this looking for rocks in space, they could kill us all. And this gets back to, there is no question, the How? ancient dinosaurs, not no question, almost no question, the ancient dinosaurs were taken out by rocks from space. How, how big a uh, single rock would it take? I mean, <clears throat> well, I, the I understand one, it's not doesn't have to be that large. No, 10 kilometers, three something That's miles, 7, six miles. miles. 
no, six no. miles. Six miles. Seven uh, miles. A, a, a rock that landed and would cover a, a space that was six miles. No, it made a crater 350 nautical miles. It made the Gulf of Mexico, basically. But or, but but what I'm area. saying is a a a a rock the size of six miles across. Mm -hmm. If it hit this planet, going that fast. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it wasn't just dropped off a folding table. Yeah. A if, high it, one. if it hits this planet at that speed, devastation? Oh, yeah, apparently. Yeah. And so <laughs> is there a way to... Oh, yeah. So you played hockey. We, 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 we have to knock it. We have to yeah. knock the puck. When you're out there. The out there, you tap it at the blue line. Right. Uh, then you could, it'll miss the goal, right? What do we tap it with? Uh, there's debate about that, but a uh, nuclear weapon. You send it out there, a weapon, nuclear instrument. Right. You send it out there, you get it real close to the planet's surface, you set it off, and then the debris from the planet will have momentum going the other way and nudge the rock off course. Debris from the planet. So we don't fire it into the split planet? Split the thing open. You do that in the movies. You split it open in the well, movies. Well, in the movie, Bruce Willis lands on whatever's <laughs> yeah. coming yeah, this does. way. Yeah, yeah. And then tunnels into it and sets the nuclear device. No need. We can just, just fire a nuclear rocket. Kinetic into kill, it. as we say, KKV, kinetic kill vehicle. Right. So, so, and w this technology is in place to some uh, degree isn't after it? a fashion. Yeah, but to shoot something to land on Mars, landing on an ellipse 50 kilometers long, takes be, eight, ten years of planning. Well, how far and then out? It doesn't always get there. How far out do we need to hit it? Well, that's the question. There you go. Now you let's spend a few million a year. We don't care if it lands out. on Mexico. Don't get us wrong. <laughs> yeah, you do. Mexico do? would take you out. Yeah, nowhere, on earth, nowhere on earth. Nowhere on earth is any good. This then France. Come no. on. Oh, France. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. Well, even that's three, bad. Two miles across. Let's say the ch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, chunk, chunk the size no, of the no, forearm or something. No, no, because it screws up. Apparently, it screws up the whole world. I mean, these dinosaurs, the ancient dinosaurs, just they couldn't get through it, and all kinds of sea creatures. <laughs> Whack! You can see it in the fossil record. So they they think the uh, Gulf of Mexico was. Oh no no! It's it's almost it's that area. The Gulf of Mexico is subsequent, but uh, made much later. But it's that's where it is in Chicxulub, Chicxulub, Mexico. So uh, off Belize, uh, where the Gulf of Mexico is now. Get great weed from great great coconut. It's from bad from for you. Yeah, it's bad, both of them. All right. So you think meteorites bad? You too. think we should be focusing a little bit more on just a little bit. Hitting it. Want to have? We have a few programs. But I think we need to, if you're asking me, and I got the impression you were, yeah. we need to consolidate a little bit more, look, look a little more aggressively. These are things I want to think about next time I get yeah, stoned. I need the bullet train. <laughs> and I want next, the, next, time you do bullet train. next time you do mushrooms? Yeah. yeah. Bullet train and asteroids. Right. That's what you need to That's think it. about. Yeah. And, and, and let me ask this. That's just the A's and the B's. How much, how much advance warning if uh, this was to happen, uh, something big was heading for this planet? Well, let's say, for example, tomorrow. To get to Mars... Right. Seven months. So let's say we saw an asteroid uh, outside the orbit of the moon. Maybe a couple months, two months. Before before we thought it would impact on yeah, this yeah, planet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just got to give it a... Just have to just kiss it just a little bit. Yeah. Just to knock if it's it, headed for sure to knock it way. into France. And notice that it's a little complicated. It's not only a hockey puck skidding through space. The goal's moving. It, uh, the goal is moving, and it, the goal is suction. The Earth has gravity. We're, which we're trying to we're sucking it in. Suck the bad boy in here, yeah. All right. Or bad girl. All right. So we'd have a few months if they uh, spotted yes, yeah, something. Two months, yeah. And you got to be ready. That's the thing of it. You can hyphenate that. The thing of it. What size do these things normally come in? Oh, all sizes. Yeah. You ever, do you have a pair of binoculars? Yeah, I do. Look at the moon. I'm looking. At my Some neighbor. of those things are hundreds of nautical miles across. Some Thousands. Of the, the, the craters. Yeah. I see. And so you ever been to Meteor Crater, Arizona? Oh, no. I tell everybody who's got a chance, it's north of Phoenix a little ways, a little over an hour. You go there, you look at this thing, and you, you realize it's a, it was made by a meteorite. And the meteorite there, 100 meters across, football field across, and, and this thing is a mile wide. Yeah. Wham! And you can see the rays, so-called, of rocks splattered out just like uh, dropping uh, mud into a... Water. Sandbox, and yeah. so so the idea basically is the uh, sort of uh, horrible idea is it do, it doesn't take much the traveling at the no, speed no because that they're it going is. yeah eleven kilometers a second they're going pretty fast let me ask one last question and yeah. we'll uh, go to break and I know we didn't talk to any screwed up teens but I got to entertain myself every once sure in a while on this show sure you do and Drew too right Drew sure okay uh, if if something he said it took us uh, it's going to take us seven months to uh, get to Mars that's punching it.
That's punching it. Pedal is, to the metal. Is, is what we're sending to Mars going the same speed as what's heading toward us? Uh, not quite. Let's see. Uh, it's how, comparable. How much How much do things vary in space in terms of speed? Well, I mean, once a, you well, get outside the atmosphere, is everything traveling about the same No, no, it's just there's an old, uh, elegant cal- calculation that uh, things that drift in space fall into the Earth at about 11 kilometers a second, at least. How many miles an hour is that? Uh, what is that? That's... Um, well, I can 15, do the math, 15 miles a second. Miles an hour multiplied by 3,600. Yeah. You get into some big numbers and do 7, 8,000, 12,000 miles an hour. Right, but the stuff, the thing we're sending to Mars, how fast is that going? Uh, that's what you got me. And I, I'd have to stop and think because I used to know that number. And, now, okay. and it's in the New York Times today, and here I am caught. Burn! Yeah, I told you. Mr. Smart Guy over Doesn't here. Doesn't even know the uh, the maximum speed of the Mars probe. Oh, God. <laughs> Give me a break, buddy. Come on, get your head in the game, Nye. Let's go. All right, let's uh, take ourselves a little break. No, right. the week is no calls this segment. Ah, who cares? All right, I like fair enough. I, the science guys here. All I want right. to know about the imminent destruction of the planet. <laughs> I'm you think I talked to some 14 year old with syphilis from Idaho? <laughs> Please. Hey, I got nice bigger fish to fry. Idaho. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Bill Nye, the science guy, is here tonight. He just stepped outside, glanced into the sky, and said there's something the size of Texas that's coming toward us. So we really... Uh, so not time, time to go. Yeah, time, we got to go. Just, yeah, just got to give it... Particularly, you know, if it's real thin. My whole thing is, I know you science guys are looking years in the future. I figure out I'm going to kick off about 71, 72, and whatever happens after that's that is fine by me. Fine by me. Wow. Can so, I have your car? Yeah. Yeah. Cars, uh, cars, uh, thank you, thank you. What do you drive? One of those electric cars, yeah, you and Ed Bagley, yeah, 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 really, yes, yeah. EV1, it's cool as heck, good, it's tech. a jewel, yeah, it's visionary, it's a pussy magnet, too, right? Sure, it is, chicks yes. love that. Oh, yeah, I love a car with no sound. Well, it's zero to 50 in 2.8, no, yeah, outperform no. a motorcycle, zero no. to 50, no, no, yeah, yeah, no, okay, <sighs> hold on a second, let me go to the website, this. dude. Yeah, I, it, it's close. I know. I, I've, I've said to not Drew, zero to sixty. Zero to I know. 50. I've said to Drew. Uh, I've said to Drew a time, time and again that the the, the electric motors. What's tor- it all about? Tor- it's all about yeah. torque. Yeah. It's tor- all about torque. torque. And uh, they zero do, RPM, maximum torque. They do. They do pull hard, but the car does zero to sixty in the it's mid. Mazda Miata. In the mid sevens. Beats a Miata. Yeah. In the mid sevens. Yeah. How come so long from fifty to? Oh, 60? that's a great question. That's an excellent question. But you. As the engine's motor speed goes up, you lose your torque. Yeah, so but but is it that many great? Many people have. Yeah, yeah. It's there. I, it is. I, many I, people I have proposed question. adding a second gear to the EB1, which would greatly increase its performance. But it's not really an issue. The thing goes I question, 150. I, I question. If you want, I question you on the 2.80 to 50. One test is worth a thousand expert opinions. I question you, my friend. We don't look into this. Give, someone get on a website. Find out what the uh, zero. GMEV1.com. Terry. Yes. Terry. Yes. Terry with the crows. Yes, hey, Seems Adam. Seems like uh, lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe that's Try that again. the static that the uh, Texas-sized media is coming to Yeah, you know, cell phones are just uh, great technology. There we are. What's up there, Amazing Terry? technology. Hey, man, how you doing? Hey, we had a crow when I was about 15 years old, and they are the smartest, meanest birds you could ever have. You had a pet crow? My dad rescued one. Sounds yeah. like it kind of had you. you. It had my dad. He rescued a crow. Was it, was it full-grown when he it, rescued it? it? Yeah, it was full grown. It had a broken wing or a dislocated shoulder or something, so it couldn't fly. Mm-hmm. Cleaned it up. It shined up nicely. Sure. And uh, we had... Get that crow polish? Yeah, you know, nice and black. We had two dobies, and as soon as my dad would take it out of the cage, it would chase the dobies out of the house. Wow. I mean, they're mean. Yeah, yeah, they're mean. yeah they are. And, and uh, was it, Drew's vision. Was it smart? Not Drew. Adams. My. Oh, Adam's. It's a blur. My, my vision was for the, for, the, for the logo. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's bad, right. And, and Terry, now how was the crow? Crow response <laughs> operative workhorse systems. <laughs> <laughs> crow. <laughs> so, like I said, we'll, up. Be, we'll do the acronym that is what the thing is. It seems like a waste of time. But it, <laughs> Terry, how yeah. was it smart, though, the crow? Yeah. When I was 15, my dad would have a hard time getting me up. He'd send the crow in there. And that would get you oh, up. Now that's what a crow is good for. So have you been abused? Is for that a lazy out here? 15-year-old son you got. Yeah. yeah you, I got issues. Your son's beating off. You send in the crow. <laughs> Go that get that weird. worm. 
That'll scare you. All right, Terry. So you're 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 um, you're behind me 100 <laughs> percent on up. this idea. He's giving some validation you know, that was, on this. This was just one crow. I couldn't imagine a flock of crows, and this little, this crow couldn't fly. So man, you gotta be real careful. You would you would run like hell if ten crows were swooping yeah, you down would. on you. All yeah. right, all right. Jessica. Yes. You're 20. What's up? Well, I have a quick question for Dr. Drew. Yeah. Um, when I was 17, um, I had an abortion. Mm-hmm. And now I'm 20. And I want to get pregnant, but it's so hard for me. Why? And I was on the shot for about a year. Yeah. When did that... You've been off it a year? Yeah, I've been off it for a year. You'll get pregnant. Don't worry. But I can tell by your accent you're going to get pregnant <laughs> very soon. What? Well, you, need a, you need a man. She's panicking a little bit. She's over the hill. Yeah. 20. Are you Mexican? Yes, I yeah, am. Yeah, you're considered an old maid at 20, not being pregnant. What's up? What's up? Do you have? Are you married? No, I'm gonna get married till next year. Next right, year. So wait till next year. You get pregnant. Don't worry about you it. Give it. Give it a little time. You can get because, pregnant. You know what? But it's weird because before I used to get my, I didn't get my period for a whole year. That's why you're on the shot. It's supposed to work that way. Well, after the shot, I didn't start. I'm um, the last time I took my shot was on March of last year. Uh huh. And then I started getting my period again during January. This year. This, uh -huh. Yeah, by about a, six months to a year. One week yes, and I would get it another week no. So right. one week yes, one week no for a month. And now I don't even get it at all again. All right. Go, go. Have you talked to the doctor about it? Yes, I have, but they just tell me, oh, it's because the shot. It's because of the shot. I've been checked like 20 million times. It, it will restart again for sure. If you are super anxious to get it going, there are the hormones they can use to try to kickstart it. But it will start up again. But uh, I, mean, I don't want to use no nothing. All right, then it will start. Then relax. It'll start Except up. Except for a double negative. Hey, you know nothing. <laughs> yeah. Don't want to use no it's nothing. Just listen. I don't. Effect. I don't want anyone raising kids who I don't want to use no nothing. <laughs> I mean, not yet. You know what I mean? Like, I don't all right. Wanna, but oh, you're fine. Jessica, relax. Right. It's gonna be. Fine. You're gonna get married. You'll be fine. You'll have some kids. What's your husband do? He's a truck driver. There you go. All right. Slow down. Get it. Make them get your finances in order. Get that career going. Then you have those kids. It'll be better in the long run. All right. She's okay. glazed over. Uh, all right, baby doll. What'd you say? Yeah. Huh? I, that, that that impulse of uh, folks, and some, somehow it seems like the ones that are a little less in the brain department want to have the more kids at an earlier age. It's not a great thing in terms of a species. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I know. It's going to be problems down the road. The uh, Bill Nye's of the world will be few and far between. Lindsay? Yeah. Thank God. You're 23. <laughs> yeah. What's up? Um, a couple of weeks ago on the show, you were talking about how if you lost your virginity after high school, you were sort of screwed up for life. No. no never said Never said that. Said anything <laughs> like that. Not you, I mean... People, they hear things through the prism of their own... Uh, yeah. Sort of sensitivity um, about their own experience. I'm going to go way out on a limb here and uh, say so she got that, pregnant uh, at 22. Lindsay well, may have lost her virginity after high school. Yes. No, no, no. It's no. Adam was saying that if you lost your virginity later. Yeah, which is you, right? No, it's actually not. It's my boyfriend. The boyfriend. boyfriend. Right. Oh, well, that is a little wacky. He'll be fine. Bill lost it when he was 29. <laughs> How did you hear about that? Hmm. Uh, it's all over the internet, Bill. Mm. Hey, uh, but you, it just, you seem to have a whole theory about it. Okay, well, let me, let me, explain, let me explain this. There, and, and this is exactly what I said before. There are people who keep their virginity for, for various reasons. Yeah. And, and those, many, many of them very good. Many very good. Mm -hmm. Some not as good. Some because they're a little screwed up. Mm -hmm. They're a little trouble with intimacy or they were traumatized right. or what have you. That's right. Uh, so if you remain a virgin into your 20s and it's for the good reasons, then that's fine. But it's for, if it's for the bad reasons, there's usually something there. Right. How old, how old was your boyfriend? He was 21. Uh, that's fine. And why did he remain a virgin until 21? He's I, gay. Drew, please. I don't know, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, yeah. I sort of think like, he was sort of small. Yeah, well, some, some guys have a little trouble just sort of with their game. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and it doesn't come together until a little bit later in life. Does he function sexually normally now? Yeah, he seems, I mean, 
I don't know. I guess I don't know exactly what that would mean. Even. Well, what is your question? Well, uh, my my what I'm going the path I'm going down is there can be things like prolactin secreting tumors and thyroid conditions and things that can really affect male sexual drive. My crows will fix those. And the crows will go after it. No, I think it's sort of like neurotic. Jewish New York. Oh, okay. Something. Well, yeah. that screwed up. All right. His, yeah, I guess. his mom brow beat him for too long, and then scared to pull his pants down. <laughs> this is what right, happens. He'll take his Jewish job. kids think their mom's going to steal their penis. <laughs> I'll let and, him uh, that. and give it to Elijah. <laughs> Is, is that part of the Passover thing? Yeah, it goes in the wine cup. We put this uh, penis on, on on the chair so Elijah can sit on it. The youngest child's, yes. Males, right. Youngest child's penis. Leave the door open, is rub some bitter herbs on, on it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jews are all neurotic because their moms are nuts and their dads are pussies and they don't step oh. in and, and straighten out the moms. This right. is why Jews are all nuts. You want to be ashamed of yourself. Jews have crazy neurotic moms and pussy dads. All and the dads right. don't step in and go, hey, where, bitch, where shut the, up. Where did the Green Beret guys come from? <laughs> those. They had Green Beret dads. Those are the Israelis. Oh, I see. They're scary. Okay. <laughs> They're the scary. I'm guy. talking about the North American domesticated Jew, yeah. Drew. <laughs> domesticated. That's good. Domestic. It's really good. Oh, yeah. Hit oh, me yes. with another one here. We're, All right. Right. We're, take We're taking a break. Lindsay, ah. this guy, he's fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. All right. Buddy. Well, God bless Bill Nye. God bless him. Smart. He's got the look. He's intelligent, uh, stimulating, fascinating. Bill, you come back to the show. It was great, man, you guys. It's really, it was just great. When, uh, when the show does get picked up uh, by PBS. Any minute. And uh, hits the air, you come back and give it a big plug. And, uh, of course, Drew will be on it at that point. And uh, is, Drew's going to be in uh, one of the earlier uh, yeah, it'll be in the first six. All right. And so will you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. that's Lucky right. you. <laughs> Lucky me. So, uh, I want to thank Bill Maher again. Uh, Bill Maher. Sorry, Bill Nye. Hello, man. Hello. They both went to Cornell. Yeah, I think six six that's right, Bill Nye. He's, yeah. just, he's a despicable asshole. And uh, <laughs> please, Drew, the mic's still hot. <laughs> Unusual <up>. guy. <laughs> so, until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Hey, man, we can't explore space. Uh, we have to pay teachers. This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.